Now, let us understand in a uh, overall quarter plan how the quoted offline quoting process happens at a uh, broader level. The process is as we said the raw glass is received from the float line and then it is taken for storage and it, uh, is, it, is, it is taken into the line and it is loaded and the first process is washing wherein we clean the uh, glass surface that is needed that is uh, going for coating and next the coating process happens. Post the coating we have quality control, we unload the glass and then it is sent for packing and then it is stored and dispatched to the customer. This is a broad overview of the process flow of coating. Now let us understand each of these uh, steps in detail. The raw glass, the raw glass from the, uh, uh, the raw glass for coating, the surface of the raw glass is quite critical for this coating process. See, as such the coating process is very sensitive and it is highly dependent on the quality of the surface of the glass, parent glass. So, the, the paint, the parent glass for sputter coating should be without any protective overcoat, it should not have any overcoat. And so, since by virtue of not having any overcoat, these raw glass can be uh, you know, susceptible for reaction to the atmosphere. So, the shelf life of raw glass is critical here. So, on, on top of that raw glass is also uh, prone for corrosions like suction cup marks and uh, no uh, spacer marks and oil uh, traces. So, it is advisable to use fresh glass from the float line for this coating process. If it is not possible then the glass has to be stored in a protective environment so that no, the glass surface is protected and uh, can be uh, no, used for coatings. This is highly critical. Next process is washing. For the washing process, the water quality is extremely critical. So, the water should be free from sediments, minerals and ions and for in order to get the superior surface quality after cleaning. So, the normal conductivity of uh, the uh, water should be in the range of point 1 micro siemens per centimeter cube so, and the typical water treatment process what is recommended is you know, once we have the raw water it has to be initial filtration, it has to go for UV treatment, dual media filter and yeah, reverse osmosis process and electro deionization process and the final quality of water has to uh, you know, uh, be separate for the directly to the washing machine for the complete cleaning. The washing process has a pre-cleaning pre process, a polishing section by which we uh, prepare the surface of the uh, glass for coating and then initial rinsing, final rinsing and curing. The EDA water is generally given directly to the final rinsing uh, zone. Now moving on, this is the uh, schematic view of the uh, PVD coater setup. Here we have the blocks which is said in terms of uh, entry chambers, buffer chamber and then the sputter chamber, the exit buffer and exit chambers. So, this is the series of blocks. As I said, the entire sputter chamber is kept under ultra high vacuum in the range of 10 power minus 6 millibar. So, this vacuum range is achieved in terms of steps. So, the entry chamber and the buffer chamber, they support in terms of achieving this you know, process vacuum. So, the glass is moved in, uh, in, term, in, in uh, steps to achieve this high vacuum uh, environment. So, the entrance chamber can be, uh, uh, no, it is from the atmospheric pressure, it can go down to 10 power minus 2 millibar. The buffer chamber generally is maintained at 10 power minus 4 millibar. From there, the transfer section operates at the process vacuum. So, the glass is moved in steps in and the vacuum is built in steps uh, downwards here. And the, exactly the reverse process happens in the exit section here. From the transfer section, we come to the atmosphere in steps. So, from 10 power minus 6 millibar range, we come to buffer chamber where is 10 power minus 4 and then the exit chamber at 10 power minus 2. From there, it breaks down to the uh, you know, atmosphere where the venting is done and then it, the glass is transferred to the uh, you know, atmosphere for the unloading section. So, this is uh, the basic uh, you know, schematic view of the uh, entire quarter plant as such. And let us see the sputter chamber in more detail here. First, we will see the entire process module configuration where this entire process module is maintained under, under a high vacuum environment. We will see here uh, no, uh, 
uh, the pump compartments as well as the cathode compartments. As I told, this is the uh, entire process chamber is made under high vacuum. The unique feature is, you no, know, it's a universal chamber. It can be, it can uh, accommodate both the pump as well as cathode compartment, and it can be reconfigured as per the needs of the process and also the product needs. So, and the compartment lids are equipped with, uh, you no, know, uh, uh, are removable. And the cathode or pump lids can be uh, removed with a crane, and they can be taken for maintenance and uh, uh, replenished back. And all the utilities that are needed for the process, in terms of process gas, the cooling water, and the electrical power, are connected directly to the cathode cover. So this is generally how the uh, process, the entire process model configuration is built. And let us study the pump compartment in more detail. The pump compartment is the one which maintains the vacuum, process vacuum, and also ensures that the there is a good gas separation between the cathodes, which use different process gases. So uh, it has, a, you know, it has a uh, pump uh, pre-vacuum um, uh, pump pipe, which is directly connected to the, uh, the pumps, which is mounted onto the lids. Next is the cathode compartment. So here you see the section of the cathode compartment. As you can see, the bottom rollers are the ones which are uh, conveying the glass at a fixed line speed. The two cylindrical tubes that you see in the top, these two tubes, these are the ones are the target materials. The circumference of these tubes has the target material that needs to be deposited on the glass. What we also see here is the environments where we have the shields which are protecting the cat the the sputter, uh, uh, the sputtering actually focusing on the actual width of the uh, glass that needs to be exposed. And we also have a protection shields in terms of floor shields which protect the coatings from falling onto the rollers and also to the surrounding environment. And we see the pump slits which enable the process gas to be pumped out uh, to the adjacent pump compartments. And the gas ramps, these are the gas ramps through which we pump in the gas uh, that is required for the process. And uh, yes, and you no, know, the the process uh, rollers have the O-rings, which ensures that there's a minimum contact of uh, on the glass. So this is the basic uh, uh, no, sectional view of the cathode compartment. In terms of cathodes, we have uh, two types of cathodes. One is the rotary cathode, which is a you no know, dual AC system, and second is a planar cathode is a single or uh, you know, which can be in single or dual system. So generally uh, the rotary cathodes are used for reactive uh, you know, sputtering of dielectric materials uh, and this is a typical uh, you know, cathode, uh, rotary cathode that you see in the picture here. And planar cathodes, they are generally used for metallic uh, uh, you know, sputtering and uh, this is a typical section of the you know, planar target that you see and this is the specific material that needs to be deposited in the glass. This is fixed as a rectangular tile on the planar cathode surface. Moving on, supporting the basic coater, we have vacuum pumps which needs to be in three stages. We have first the mechanical pumps which are rotary, generally rotary vein pumps that operate from the atmosphere uh, to a uh, no, 10 power minus 2 range and from there the roots blow pump which support the backup, uh, which acts as a backup pump for the mechanical pumps and in the uh, pump lids we have turbo molecular pumps which maintain the high vacuum of 10 power minus 6 millibar range. And uh, since this process happens uh, also generates heat inside the uh, coating chamber we have a cooling water unit that supplies the cooling water to the coating environment, the shields and also to the pumps and also the, uh, the power supply units. The dry air compressor, this is needed for uh, to uh, know for the venting cycle that is at the both entry chamber as well as the exit chamber. And power supplies, this is for connected for each of the cathode has an individual power supply unit connected and uh, this is could be either a AC power supply or a DC power supply depending on the cathode configuration. So now coming back, let us have a recap of the products that we do in terms of offline coating process. Initially, we said we have two types of major applications in terms of uh, you know, building uh, exterior application. One is for in terms of solar control, second in terms of low E. First, coatings for solar control applications. So, this 
objective is to avoid direct heating from the sun and uh, so the coating functionality is it reflects or absorbs the non visible part of solar radiation and transmits the visible light inside the building. So, the typical uh, no layers could be uh, no it could be a 3 or 5 layer coating. Um, so, it will have a basic under layer, a active layer and a uh, over layer. So, the under layer ensures that the coating is uh, uh, no uh, is uh, adhering to the glass, it is sticking to the glass. Active layer is the one which gives the functionality of coating and the over layer is the one which protects against the uh, no uh, atmospheric effect and the uh, no handling and uh, uh, no uh, mechanical abrasion. So, as I told uh, no uh, the solar control coating uh, generally uh, cuts down the solar radiation which happens in the visible uh, in the visible and the near infrared uh, range. Next is the uh, coatings for low emissivity applications. The objective here is to stop the thermal radiation uh, thermal transfers that is happening by radiation. So, here you know these again could be uh, 5, 7, uh, 11, 17, 20 layer coatings depending on the product that is offered and its selectivity or the performance. So, we will have a dielectric layer and a functional layer which could be a silver based uh, coating and on top of it we will have uh, no more dielectric which protects the silver layer against the uh, atmospheric effect. So, the low emissivity uh, glazing uh, it has uh, no uh, it, it works on the thermal infrared uh, range. So, the, the black body spectrum so it uh, works in that range and also it transmits the visible light and solar thermal energy into the building. So, this is the area where we will have the uh, no uh, functionality of our low emissivity glass applications. Now, let us move on to understand the quality control that is uh, applied on the coated glass. So, the quality regime will have to be uh, for the manufacturer the quality regime has to be compliant with the standards or of European standards as below which is EN 1096 part 1 which says about glass in buildings of coated glass and it says about the methods related to artificial weathering of coatings on glass for use in building applications. And also the second part is part 2 where it talks about the requirements and test methods for class A, B and S type coatings and other important uh, related documents could be related to the test methods of class C and D coatings and evaluation and non-conformity, uh, evaluation of conformity and product standard that is part 4. So, these are the basic uh, compliances that we need to establish to these standards in terms of the quality regime in the production process. So, the typical uh, the quality controls that exist are in terms of in the line, we will have color measurements in line which measures the optical mainly the transmission of light uh, in inside the uh, coating chamber. This is useful for product adjustments in case of multi layer coatings and also they provide information related to the individual layers that is uh, you know sputtered on the uh, glass. And we will also have a X situ measurements at the end of the line where you will have a spectrophotometer that will traverse across the width of the glass. Here the glass uh, measurements will give us one on the glass side, coating side in terms of transmission and reflection, the LAB across the width of the glass and this is generally used to control the quality against the specifications of the product. And there is also on top of this we will also have a visual inspection since the coating process also uh, you no know, involves uh, spot, uh, the thin film coating also creates uh, you no know, uh, debris and other defects on the glass. We now to have a additional visual control, which will have manual inspection under simulated daylight conditions, and it will control surface defects like debris, pinholes, breakages, and other aspects. So uh, apart from this online test, we should also uh, the quality regime will mandate taking samples at periodical intervals as per the specific frequency as per the standard and also the product requirements and these are uh, intended to mimic the solicitation which can be uh, uh, no which can happen in coated glass like mechanical tests, chemical tests, colorimetric tests, shelf life aging and tempering tests. So, these are uh, tests that is 
mandated to check for the durability of the glass for the entire product life cycle. And once the quality control is uh, the quality glass passes the quality control then it is unloaded and stacked and it goes for packing. The offline coated glass uh, you know, is generally sensitive to atmospheric conditions. So, hence it is recommended to protect during the storage and transit to the customer locations. So, the types of packing will depend upon the exact product that you use and the surface treatment that the manufacturer uses and also the local manufacturing conditions. Typically, the packing is done by sealing the edge protection tapes with adequate quality quantity of desiccants and transportation of coated glass over high seas, it may require special aluminum foil wrapping to prevent oxidation. 